So we're going to try cutting back on the on the highs at 28 kilohertz a little bit. So we can probably get away with that without affecting the audio too much. Now if your hearing is in extremely good condition and you have that uh, 20 kilohertz frequency response that uh, we're all born with, that may be too much for you. But sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of that for the ultimate clarity further down the line. Now we've been using the 10 kilohertz here as as our frequency to start with but we could use some of the other frequencies as well now the lower ones like the 1.5 3 4 5 are more useful when you're cutting tracks you know those are guitar electric guitar frequencies those are snare frequencies that you might find useful but the 8 10 and 12 are probably the ones you're going to use most often in a situation like this and 10 to me always sounds the best but i've occasionally used 8 occasionally used 12 you have to decide for yourself which which is the preferable one for you, and um, we're going to leave everything set the way it was. But uh, we're going to change this to eight instead of ten. You can hear it's a little lower, picks up a little bit more of the nasal quality of the vocal. Um, let's try 12 instead. The 12 is more of an airy sound to it. Dans mon plan, j'y vois pas très bien. On est des milliards sur la terre, ou même en enfer. On pense à son bien. Hey, the top end sounding pretty good now. Let's see what we can do with with the lows. It's also, very nice to begin with. Not much needed here. But let's start at 100 hertz and add a couple of steps of boost. I don't know about you, but I like what that does to the low end, but at the same time, it adds a certain muddiness to it that I'm not completely happy with. So we could do several things. We could change this frequency to 60 or 140, 140 would probably be the wrong direction, 40 would probably not be appropriate for this track, or we can use the mid cut in conjunction with this low boost in order to, to clean that up a little bit. Now to me it's still a little bit tubby sounding. I don't quite like the low end yet. Maybe we should try cutting some of the lows. You know, one thing you can do is actually boost and cut at the same frequency because these controls have slightly different curves. So the actual amount of uh, the, the shape of the curve changes significantly. So let's just try that. We'll cut a bit of that there.
That removes some of that low end uh, tubbiness, but I don't quite like that because we've lost some of that nice low end that, that was starting to sound really good. So let's try the cut at 40 instead. Now it's starting to sound pretty good, but I think at this point we could add a little more of the 100 hertz boost. Let's see if we've really improved it or whether we just think we have. I'll wait till the vocal starts, let her do one line, then I'll switch the EQ in. Now to me that's really opened up the track a lot. I like that right now. That doesn't mean I'm going to stick with that forever, but that sounds pretty good. So let's move on now and add some compression to this because so far we've just been listening to it without any compression. I have the VT7 stereo EQ set up here with settings that I would typically use, which would be a moderately um, slow attack time, a moderately fast release time with the harder, softer control about in the middle. And we're going to add just about 2 or 3 dB of compression. Now one thing you'll notice here when we add the compression, it suddenly makes everything sort of fit together better. The mix sounds tighter. I've had people actually tell me that when they add the compression to it, it sounds like a different take because it sounds like suddenly all the players are tighter. And that's one of the things compression on the mix bus can do for you. Now, right now we're using, you know, probably as much as you would ever use on, on a mix bus like this. Remember the VT7 isn't a loudness machine. This is something to in increase the coherence of the track. So we're, uh, we're not trying to make it louder, although it does some of that. Um, but we're just trying to get everything to fit together better. Let's take a listen and we're going to take the, the compression out here in a second. We're going to start from the beginning again and um, we'll just listen to it with the compression and then take the compression out again. Now the first thing you notice is that the level goes up a little bit. We could compensate for that, but just for the sake of our demonstration today, we're going to ignore that and just listen to the way the cohesiveness of the track. Let's put that compression back in now. use every possible combination of controls today in this demo but let's just do some extremes so you can hear what it'll do let's take it all the way fast on the uh, release time this is going to add a little bit of distortion to the low end Although we're using the link high pass filter here, which reduces the sensitivity of the compression to low frequencies. We switch that to straight link, which takes out that filter. You'll notice that the low end drops somewhat, and also the distortion level comes up. Let's listen to that by itself.
Probably something you never use, but just so you know what it does. Okay, since we're going to extremes, why don't we crank the compression up all the way? We're indicating on here, you know, 5 to 7 dB of compression. The actual amount of compression is probably 20 or more dB on the peaks because we can't see the peaks on the, on the mechanical meter. That's probably a setting you never use, but just something so you get an idea of what it can do. Now let's try something. We're going to go to the slowest release time. Um, some people really like the real slow release times on the mix bus. I prefer something faster, but I've heard projects people have done that way and they sound terrific so it's just a matter of style this is as slow as it goes you have to be careful with this setting because on some material it can really punch holes in it because something loud that comes along can really take a long time for the gain to recover especially if we go to the link position where the low end can actually control the release time. Probably something you wouldn't use very often. And the harder, softer control. This is <clears throat> something that's rather subtle on a lot of material. It really depends on the type of material involved. But let's take it from one extreme to another. This is all the way to the harder position. Now personally, I find that the middle position is the one that I end up using almost all the time on a mix bus like this. So let's set this up to where we think it's about the best. Qu'est-ce qui fait du 